Hi, I'm Biresh Panerjee. Welcome to DW News Asia. Glad you could join us. A DW analysis has found that the thirst for cheap clothing from Bangladesh is depleting groundwater levels in the country. Clothing manufacture requires huge quantities of water, which many farms are sourcing from the groundwater table. The practice has severely depleted water levels over a decade, with a serious impact on the environment and farmers. For farmer Abdul Ali Mulla, the groundwater here is a precious resource for his fields. He relies on it to tide over the dry months when there is no rain. But every year, he says, it is becoming harder and harder to reach. We didn't know why this was happening. We asked the mechanic and he told us we would need a new pipe to reach deeper into the ground. That increased our costs. And as a result, we have to spend two to three times as much money to irrigate our fields. Farmers like Mola have seen groundwater levels steadily drop over the last three decades. They know what is to blame. Factories like this one. Bangladesh is the second biggest clothing exporter in the world. And clothes manufacturing is a water-intensive business. Washing and dyeing one kilogram of denim can take 250 litres of water. That adds up. The country's garment factories and mills consume a whopping 1,500 billion litres of water every year. That is enough water to meet the needs of Dhaka's 20 million residents for 10 months. And there is proof. DW analysed groundwater levels near four areas where most of these factories are located. It found that groundwater levels dropped sharply over a 10-year period. This graph shows how much deeper one has to dig to find water now. Meanwhile, garment manufacturing in these areas has increased nearly fourfold. In other areas where there are no factories, the groundwater levels have remained the same or even improved. There may still be hope. Some factories like this one have introduced new technologies that reduce the amount of water these processes need. We've installed some waterless systems. We used to need 20 litres of water for each kilogram of textiles. Now we only use one litre. But this new technology is costly and not everyone here is willing to invest. Especially while orders from brands and customers keep rolling in. Analysts believe this is a difficult change to make on a national scale and that a global shift is needed in how textiles are manufactured to save precious groundwater. It is a shift that many farmers who live in the areas around these factories are desperately waiting on. My colleague Zubair Ahmed from DW's Bengali service brought us that report and he joins me now for more. Zubair, talk to us a bit about these factories featured in your report. Whom do they primarily produce these clothes for? Miresh, 75% uh, of Bangladesh's textile um, export goes to nine countries. Europe is the largest export market. And other than Germany, is the UK, Italy, France, uh, Spain, Netherlands, and Belgium are the more major destinations. And in North America is the US and Canada. And if you talk about the major retailers, uh, like uh, you name any, like either it's H&M, Adidas, Levi's, Zara, Gap, Walmart, European Eagle, many of them import clothes from Bangladesh. And, and how concerned are these big Western brands about the environmental degradation cheap clothing is causing in Bangladesh? I would say the concern is there. Like, you know that just last week, uh, the EU Parliament has called for an end to fast fashion and adopting a more ethical and sustainable consumer choices. Uh, um, some of the brands also have been engaging in the process of more sustainable fashion making. For example, the Swedish H&M H &M brand, uh, uh, 
they have they have been working with their Bangladeshi producers to reduce water and other resources in the cotton uh, and or denim production process. And um, lately, they have been also being involved with uh, the UN and also WWF to work on greener solutions. But I would say that these engagements also have their own challenges and also uh, not enough in terms of the need. But then these engagements aren't becoming the norm as yet, are they? Because we saw in your report, for example, there is that technology that is uh, expensive, but it does save water, these water saving technologies that some factories are being able to install, but not all. So what you are talking about is yet to become the norm, isn't it? Well, like uh, we have also talked, as you have seen in the in the in the report, right? Uh, we have also talked to the factory owners on the ground. Like the concern they have is like the the investment they have to do. It's huge, and uh, and uh, mm, they don't they are not sure that how would the business look like after that, and because will the retailers pay the extra cost or uh, will they pass on pass it on to the customers? Or, uh, like, it seems there are a lot of gray areas uh, that are needed to be discussed. Uh, let's just look at the environmental side of this a bit more in detail, because I wonder whether Bangladesh government is in all of this. For instance, are there no regulations governing the use of groundwater? Well, there are. Uh, first, like, you have to know that Bangladesh has a thriving government industry and the country has the most lead certified green textile factories in the world. The government has also their schemes on green green, green investments and uh, there are mandatory laws to install ETPs and other, other measures uh, like to stop pollution and other environmental impacts. But the overall environmental implications uh, is are huge and people suffer from water scarcity. So experts say that, that, that the cost of water in terms of its environmental implication is not calculated. The government has to work on that. Uh, speaking of the government having to work, I think one of the core questions after seeing your report is how does Bangladesh prevent the depletion of groundwater levels? Well, uh, depletion of water level is a huge issue in Bangladesh. It's not concentrated in those areas only where the factories are, because there are a lot of other factors uh, that are involved in water depletion. Like, for example, according to UN, Bangladesh uh, ranks sixth uh, with the largest yearly underground water extraction, and uh, like uh, and and the multi factors they involve a lot of. Uh, local and geopolitical issues as well. Uh, but the government is now trying to refill the underground uh, uh, water. For example, uh, the, the local water development board, they have recently uh, taken uh, an initiative that uh, um, to recharge or refill the underground aquifers with, uh, with, with the storm water or um, saline, from saline water, like uh, they wanted to do this, uh, take this initiative to uh, like different from different sources, they want to refill the water, underground water there. And what about the, the, the farmers that we saw in your report who live around these garment producing factories? Is there a plan to help them sustain their livelihoods? Because clearly the lack of water is affecting their, their earnings. Well, the farmers have to dig deeper to get water. That's their fate right now. So in places they could get water with shallow machines previously, like now they have to put deep tubers like so that they can go deeper. And not only that, like now every time, like every two years, they might have to go deeper and uh, reaching those pipes as well. So the, the, the increase, this increases the cost of crop production and also this is not sustainable. So the only solution, what the experts say, is to stabilize right. the groundwater level. And hopefully that happens sooner rather than later. Zobair, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.